we understand the process of sampling. In this process, we try to sample a continuous time signal whose example waveform you can see on your screen. And this continuous time signal we call message signal and therefore we represent it by MT. And we have considered this message signal MT to be a band limited signal and therefore its Fourier transform m omega will be limited like this. It is non-zero from minus omega m to plus omega m where omega m is the maximum frequency component of the message signal mt. We feed this message signal to a device known as sampler and along with message signal we feed one more continuous time signal which is ct and ct is a periodic impulse train whose waveform you can see on your screen and the fundamental angular frequency of the periodic impulse train is omega s and omega s is known as the sampling frequency and once we feed mt and ct to the sampler this device will multiply the continuous time signal mt and the continuous time signal ct and will give us another continuous time signal st which is known as the sampled signal and its waveform you can see on your screen and in the first lecture of the sampling theorem we obtained the Fourier transform of the sampled signal the Fourier transform s omega will look like this and in this particular waveform you can see that the spectrum here is repeated here we have the spectrum and again the same spectrum is there and you can see that the same spectrum is shifted towards the right and then added to this spectrum similarly this spectrum is shifted towards the left this one and then added and in this way we have obtained the waveform of s omega in the first lecture of sampling theorem everything is explained in a very detailed manner we have derived s omega and from that derivation we have obtained this waveform and this waveform is one possibility out of three possibilities this waveform will occur when omega s which is the sampling frequency will be greater than twice of omega m if you look closely you will find this frequency is equal to omega m you can see that this frequency is equal to omega m and this frequency will be omega s and this frequency here this frequency i will write it down is equal to omega s minus omega m this is omega s minus omega m and if we want the spectrums to not touch each other and also not overlap each other then omega s minus omega m this means this frequency here should be greater than omega m omega s minus omega m should be greater than omega m and from here you will get omega s should be greater than twice of omega m and when omega s is equal to twice of omega m this means omega m is equal to omega s minus omega m these two frequencies will be same and hence we will have a touching spectrums and the case when omega s is less than twice of omega m we will have the case of overlapping because in that case omega s minus omega m will be less than omega m all these points I have explained in great detail in the first lecture of the sampling theorem and right now we are simply revising them. So here we have considered this case omega s is greater than twice of omega m and now we will try to obtain the message signal mt from the Fourier transform of the sampled signal. So from this we will try to obtain mt whose waveform I have shown initially. So let's see how to do this. ST is the sampled signal and we will apply this signal to a low pass filter and the frequency response of this low pass filter is like this. Omega C is known as the cutoff frequency and here we have considered the case of ideal low pass filter. So the frequency response of the ideal low pass filter 
will look like this and this low pass filter will give us the signal which is the message signal and we are calling it recovered message signal that's why we are using the representation m subscript r where r stands for the recovered signal t and we know we know h omega is equal to the fourier transform of the output which is mr omega divided by the fourier transform of the input which is s omega from here we can say that mr omega m r omega is equal to h omega multiplied to s omega h omega multiplied to s omega we know h omega it is having the waveform like this we know s omega it is having the waveform like this so let's quickly multiply them to get mr omega and once we have mr omega we can perform the inverse fourier transform to get mrt which is our message signal and this is what we want to achieve we want to achieve or you can say we want to recover the message signal from the sampled signal so when we multiply h omega and s omega we will get mr omega having the waveform like this which is same as this waveform and from here we can obtain mrt which will have the waveform similar to mt now we will understand how we have obtained this waveform after multiplying h omega and s omega and for this purpose i will copy this portion of the waveform and then i will paste it and i will try to align it properly and when you look closely you will find this frequency here is equal to omega c and we know omega c is the cutoff frequency of the low pass filter we are using and this frequency here is equal to omega m we already know omega m is the maximum frequency component of the message signal now focus on the waveform of h omega it is equal to 0 from minus infinity to minus omega c and it is again equal to 0 from plus omega c to plus infinity therefore when you multiply h omega and s omega you will find the waveform is equal to 0 from minus infinity to minus omega c now from minus omega c to this frequency here which is minus omega m s omega is equal to 0 so product of s omega and h omega will be equal to 0 so overall we can say that from minus infinity to minus omega m we are going to get 0 as the value of h omega multiplied to s omega which is mr omega so in the waveform of mr omega you can see that from minus infinity to minus omega m we are having value equal to 0 similarly from omega m to plus infinity we will have mr omega equal to 0 and from minus omega m to omega m you can see that this value is not equal to 0 and we are having non-zero value of s omega as well so we will have the waveform which is same as this waveform value of s omega when omega is equal to 0 is equal to 1 by ts here the value is equal to 1 by ts and this low pass filters gain is equal to ts so 1 over ts multiply to ts will give you 1 here and in this waveform when omega is equal to 0 m omega is equal to 1 so we are getting the same waveform but look at the condition in which we are getting the same waveform omega c is greater than omega m omega c is greater than omega m and also omega c is less than omega s minus omega m it is less than omega s minus omega m so when this condition is satisfied we are going to get the same fourier transform and therefore we can recover this signal exactly 
when we have the same Fourier transform then only we have the recovered signal which is same as the message signal. Now we will understand the case in which cutoff frequency is same as omega m and when this happens it is clear that we are going to get the waveform of h omega like this the yellow one is the waveform of h omega in which the cutoff frequency which is omega c is equal to the maximum component of the frequency in mt so here you can see that omega c which is the cutoff frequency is equal to omega m and in this case also when you multiply h omega and s omega you are going to get the same waveform therefore we can recover our signal when omega c is equal to omega m now in the third case we will understand what will happen when omega c is equal to omega s minus omega m so in this scenario we are going to get the waveform of h omega which will look like this the dark green one is the waveform of h omega when omega c which is the cutoff frequency is equal to omega s minus omega m here you can see omega c is equal to omega s minus omega m and in this scenario again we are going to get the same waveform when you multiply the green waveform to the waveform of s omega you will find we are getting this waveform so when omega c is equal to omega s minus omega m we are going to get the same waveform as this one and therefore we can have the recovered signal same as our message signal and our purpose is satisfied but when omega c is less than omega m when omega c is less than omega m this means we will have the waveform of h omega like this white waveform here you can see this frequency is equal to omega c and omega c is less than omega m so the waveform which you will get here is like this and you will find this portion of the waveform and this portion of the waveform is not present and as we don't have the exact waveform or you can say the exact Fourier transform we cannot recover the exact same message signal so omega c less than omega m is not allowed similarly when you take the case in which you consider h omega to have the cutoff frequency greater than omega s minus omega m in this scenario we will have the waveform which i am representing by the blue color i am using the blue color for this waveform now this time the waveform you can see here is having cutoff frequency which is this one is greater than this frequency which is omega s minus omega m so cutoff frequency is greater than omega s minus omega m and in this scenario you can see that this part of the waveform is included which is this one but this part is also included along with this part so we will have the waveform like this and again we have the Fourier transform which is not same as this Fourier transform so the obtained time domain signal the corresponding time domain signal to this Fourier transform will not be same as our initial message signal so the recovered signal will not be same as the message signal and our purpose is not satisfied when this condition is there so remember to get the signal back this condition should be there and we are considering the case in which there is no overlapping we are having the case in which there is no overlapping and all this discussion is there for this particular case when there is no overlapping omega s is greater than twice of omega m for other cases you can have your own analysis the third case in which omega s is less than twice of omega m whatever cutoff frequency you have you are not going to get your signal back because there will be overlapping but when omega s is equal to twice of omega m then you can have your signal back and that will happen when all these three frequencies omega m omega c and omega s minus omega m are the same frequencies 
omega m should be same as omega c and this will make omega s minus omega m same as omega c. Because we have seen when these triangles touch each other then omega m is same as omega s minus omega m and when omega c is equal to omega m it is same as omega s minus omega m. So I hope all these points are now clear to you. They are little bit confusing but if you have followed the first lecture of sampling theorem then definitely all these points are now making sense to you and I have tried my best to explain all these points. If you have any doubt you may ask in the comment section but honestly there should not be any doubt. So I will end this lecture here. See you in the next one.